say this is my Bible it is the word of God it has the power to change my life and to give me an inheritance amongst all the saints I'm not a hearer only but I'm a doer of the word wave your Bible at me and as the person standing by you did you come with your Bible if the person says no say it next to you come with your own Give the Lord praise and take your seats. Amen. Put your hands together for the temple choir. Now, I don't know whether when the conductor is dancing, when she does that, whether it changes the tempo, and when she... Put your hands together for them. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Amen. God is a good God. Tell somebody the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Amen. October is our month of raising children. And uh, one of my messages that got a lot of acclaim on all the radio stations we played them was my series on raising children. Um, Rainbow Radio, I had calls from all over the world, people who listened. And then when uh, Radio Gold restarted recently, um, you know, we started playing Raising Children and the producers said the attention of people for those messages were awesome. And amazingly, yeah, if you are clapping, do it well. And my book, Arrows, Raising Godly Children, is one of my best-selling books. Yeah, if you are clapping, do it well. Now, for those of you watching me and saying that I don't have the time to read, you can download it on iTunes or Audible. Audible, there is an application called Audible. When you go there, you can get arrows raising godly children to buy. And surprisingly, um, across the nations of the world where I've been privileged to teach a little bit on it, I remember last year in France, I was teaching on raising children, and there was this general overseer, 70 years old. And uh, as I shared, I made, an, I made a call. In fact, as I shared, an apostle got up and asked the question. He said, but we know that all pastor's kids are supposed to be bad. How are you saying these things? And then we see your son also preaching here. I was with Apostle Francis then, and I said, no. There's nowhere the scripture says that pastor's kids must be bad. And then the Sunday after I finished teaching, this apostle, he he oversees over 3,000 churches. And then I made a call of people who, are, who think they've, they've made mistakes in the, ra- the way they raise their children. They should get up. He was the first person to get up. I thought he didn't understand me because he's a Frenchman. And so I said they should sit. And I said it again and he stood. And after the service, he consulted with me and said, the things I taught 
if he had known that, because he had lost all his children into different, they are doing all kinds of things. If he had known that, he wouldn't have made those mistakes they made. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sharing um, parts of October and parts of November. I will be talking about raising children. And I'll just be scratching that the surface. There are some basic things if you don't get right, it makes a problem. Now, some of you whose children are adults already, you say, oh, but my kids are already adults. Well, for the sake of your grandchildren and for the sake of instructing your adult children to help them raise their children, you must hear this. And for those of you saying, I'm not married, so why must I know this? You must know it. You must put it on the shelves. And when you get there, you can go for it. Give the Lord praise. So... Before I get into the word, I see our Italy pastor here, uh, Pastor Nana Sapon. Yes, you're welcome. God bless you. And I see our chief deacon traveled. He was away for, is it six weeks? And he's back home. Welcome back. Amen. Okay. Lift up one hand as a sign of surrender. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's time to declare your word. Your word is already anointed. I ask for utterance. I ask for insight, wisdom, and revelation knowledge to be a blessing to your people in Jesus' name. And will the saints say amen? In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4, it says, And you fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of of the Lord. So the Bible says parents shouldn't provoke their children to wrath, but to bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. In talking about raising children, the first thing I want us to establish is the fact that children are gifts of God. Amen. Or children are a gift from God. In Psalm 127 and verse 3, Psalm 127 verse 3, I'm reading from the American Standard Bible, the New American Standard Bible, and it says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. So children are a gift of the Lord. It is God who gives children. Amen? It is God who gives children. So children are God's greatest gifts to any nation and to any people and to any family. Because children become the creators and shapers of a nation. So a nation's tomorrow is bleak without children. And a nation whose children are not raised well is doomed. Amen. So the children of today will become the adults of tomorrow. And we shouldn't take the children of today for granted. It's very important we invest in the children of today. Their quality and personality will determine the kind of future that awaits us as a nation. Their personality and quality will also determine the kind of future that you, as an old man or woman, you will have to expect. So it is binding on every nation and every church and every family to nurture strong, healthy morally and intellectually sound young people. In talking about raising children, we must remember that there are four phases of a child's life, four phases or four stages of raising children, four stages. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, it says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Growing up as a young man, I determined that by the grace of God, I would want to raise my children so that I don't suffer the casualties I saw and read a number of pastors had suffered. And I had seen parents. So I prayed, I studied the scriptures, I read materials, I read a lot of materials about raising children. I read a lot of materials about children who are gone wayward. I read a, I read a lot of materials. <laughs> I was telling some pastors that when I started out in ministry, 
I used to read more books on why people failed than on why people succeeded. Because success, you can always reach there. But maintaining that success is the thing. Because there are many people who've been successful and ended up failures. So for me, it mattered knowing why some parents lost their families. And I remember years ago, I was flying um, to Liberia. And on the journey, there was this gentleman who was sitting by me, very rich guy. And uh, whilst we talked, he, he said, I've lost. I, I said, how many children do you have? As we, you know, the conversation went on. And he said, oh, I, I have one daughter, but I've lost her. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I've given her everything, but I've lost her because I didn't have the opportunity to raise her and relate with her. So even though I've given her everything, we don't have a relationship. So there is a season. There is a season and a time for everything. And there are some times you never can get back. Billy Graham, that great evangelist, said one time, in fact, when I read his life story so many years ago, he said that, He's been on the uh, deaf side of many people who were dying. And on the deathbed of many people, you hardly hear anybody say, I didn't work enough. I didn't work hard. No. But he had many people say, I didn't spend enough time with my family. Amen. So there is a season. There is a season for raising your children. And in raising your children, there are four phases. And the first phase is the fa- the, when they are born to when they are five years old. When they are born to when they are five years old, you teach them discipline. When they are born to five years old, you teach them discipline. Then there's the second phase. When they are five to 12 years old, you train them. When they are five to 12 years old, you train them. And when they are 12 to 18 years old, you coach them. You coach them. And when they are 18 years old plus, they become your friends. Watching many parents, I have seen a lot of them misplace these faces in the lives of their children. There are parents who make their babies zero to five years, they are friends. Your zero to five year child cannot be your friend. They must be taught discipline. You, you must love them, but they must be taught discipline. And from 5 to 12, you can't, they can't be your friends. You must train them. From 12 to 18, you can't also be disciplining them. You coach them. And when they are 18, it's not when your children are 18 plus, then you say you want to train them. It won't work. At that time, they become your friends. And so you don't have to mix all these faces in raising kids up. It is very important you accept the responsibility of parenting. You must accept the responsibility of parenting. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 13, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 13, why is, it, why is it quiet in here? <laughs> you are receiving. Okay. In First Samuel chapter 3, verse 13, it says, For I have, this is when, you know, Anna prayed for a child and uh, she made a vow. She said, God, when you give me a child, I would give that child back to you. So God gave her her firstborn. And she honored her pledge. She took her firstborn Samuel to Eli the priest and gave Samuel to Eli to stay all the days of his life serving the Lord. And then when Eli, when Samuel was a little boy, one day he heard a voice say, Samuel, Samuel, and he ran to Eli, his father, and said, a spiritual father and father, because he was now staying with him. He said, you called me. And this was midnight. And the father said, no, 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 I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. He went, he heard the voice again, Samuel, Samuel. He ran to him. He said, uh, he said, no, no, I didn't call you. 
He ran to him a third time and he said, the next time you hear that voice, say, Master speak or Lord speak, thy servant hears. Amen. Or is listening. And then God gave Samuel, the little boy, a prophecy or prophetic insight for Eli. And when Samuel woke up in the morning, he couldn't tell Eli. So Eli called him and said, what did God tell you? Because some... Eli knew that God wanted to speak to him because in <laughs> the chapter 2 of 1 Samuel, a prophet had come to Eli and said that God is saying that because of your children, I had promised that your children and your children's children shall be priests all the days of their lives. But because of the way your children are behaving, because Eli's children had become priests and when the women come to sacrifice, they would take advantage of the women, sleep with them. And then when they brought the sacrifices, they would take the sacrifice and chop the sacrifice before what was given to God. And God was peeved. So God sent a prophet to him. So Eli knew that God was trying to talk to him. That's why he spoke to Samuel. Now, that is a very fearful thing. To get to a place where Eli could not hear from God. He had to be taking outsiders. To be hearing from God and telling him. And then now it took his son Samuel to hear from God and talk to him. And in the verse 13 of First Samuel chapter 3 verse 13, God makes a profound statement. He says, for I have told early that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows. And this is the place that always struck me when I read it the first time. He says, because his sons made themselves vile and he did not restrain them. So God was saying, my problem is with Eli himself. Because even though his children are adult children, he knew what they were doing was wrong and he did not stop them. Now, so you as a parent, God will hold you responsible for the behavior of your children. Am I teaching some Bible? Your yes needs a top up. So now it's not only your biological children. And so even the dependents, your house helps and your uh, house boys and the people in your house, once those people are in your care at a certain age, God will hold you responsible. Amen. He will hold you responsible how they turn out. There are many people, they will take care of their children. And when it comes to their house helps and others, they would correct their children. They would, they would never correct their house helps. And if they have to correct their house helps, they will blast them. They will install them. They will dehumanize them. In fact, in the old days in Ghana, house helps the women will make sure that they give them a long frock, long magazine, and then they will shave their head so that their husband will not. <laughs> Amen. But you see, God will hold you responsible for the people he has given in your care. One thing that prevents you from being a good parent is failing to take responsibility. You must accept the responsibility so you can't say that however, however you turn out, it doesn't matter. No, it must matter to you. Tell somebody it must matter to you. If you are clapping, do it well. Listen, church, there is nothing you can do about your ancestors, but you can do a lot about your descendants and your dependents. Amen? Your ancestors who have gone before you, there is nothing you can do about them. But your children and your grandchildren and your dependents, there's everything you can do about them. So if you are going to be in your children's memory tomorrow, you have to be in their lives today. Did you hear me? If you are going to be in your children's memory tomorrow, you have to be in their lives today. So it's important to remember that having children doesn't make you a parent. Having children, giving birth doesn't make you a parent. Amen? 
As for giving birth, there are many people who have given birth and there are no parents. Amen. There are many people. And that's why in this church over the years, I've been saying this. That look, if you are a man and before you met the Lord, you did. Amen. And so you had some moves and you had a child before you met the Lord. Now that you have met the Lord and now that you know, take care of that child. Talk to your wife. Amen. And take care of that child. Amen. If bringing that child into your home will be the problem, make sure you still take care of them, but they visit you regularly so that you can speak into their lives. It's very important. And if you are a woman in this church and your husband before he married you, he told you that uh, I have some children already. Don't, not because you want your own children or you have started having your own children with him, don't maltreat those other children. It doesn't work like that. Amen? You are... Give time, treat those children as if they were your children. Some of them may not respect you as their parent, but hey, Jesus said, don't only give to those who will give back to you. Give to those who will not or will not be in a position to give back to you. Give me a believing amen. Now, it is true that many of us may have been raised in unstable families, but we don't have to pass it on to our children. The fact that you, you, you were raised in an unstable environment, your father was not married to one wife, and so there were all kinds of challenges. You don't have to pass it on to your children. That is the more reason why you must give your children the best or you must be an example to your children. Give me a believing amen. Because unstable parents create insecure children. And time will not permit us on this journey to talk about divorce and the impact divorce has on children. But unstable families create insecure children. And stable parents raise stable children if they give them attention. So children need affection. They need affection. And when I talk about affection, you must hug your children. You must hug your children. When was the last time you hugged your child? There are some parents who have never given their child a tu, a tu bam. Eh? That's how we call it, a tu bam. There are some, there are some parents when they, they are coming from work and their children hear they are coming, they have to run from the living room and go and hide because you can't be in daddy's living room. Yes, it is true that's how your father raised you, but you are a child of God. The scripture doesn't want, expect you to do that. Give the Lord praise. Give him praise. So give your children affection. Give them affection. Affection. You must hug them. Give them affection. There are parents who have not sat down with their children to talk before. The only time they sit down with their children is to give them instructions. I'm not talking about giving your child instructions. I'm talking about giving them attention, listening to them. There are parents who never listen to their children. They don't listen to them. Then the parents, they know everything, but you don't know everything. Amen? I said what? You don't know everything. And there are times you think you know what they are going through. Now, you, when you were in school, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, there was no free HSL show. So what they are going through in free SHS, you, you don't even understand. In your days, the kind of things you used to meet. In our days, we used to makers of civilization. We were reading makers of civilization. We were, oh, when we were we, we knew about Alexander the Great and all those people. I mean, we knew about Kwame Nkrumah with, oh, oh. These days, some of the children, the other day I saw them examine some children <laughs> and the examination was, was so frustrating. 
I mean, they ask them, what is a gynecologist? He said, eh, it's in northern Ghana. Gynecologist, it's in northern Ghana. So, when your children say, listen to me, listen to them. There are parents who say, you, you say I should listen to you. You say I should listen to you. Now you are grown up and you are saying I should listen to you. What is the big deal in listening to your child? It's not a big deal because the truth of the matter is what they are going through, you don't even understand. Amen? Your daughter is telling you that some boy be saw me and the boy immediately start, she started saying some boy be where to boyfriend eh? one of my granddaughters said hey, some small the small boy be said you are beautiful I love you I said hey tell him that grandpapa will come there <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you must give your children attention. You must give them affirmation that is positive words every day. There are, there are parents, the only words they say to their children, whoa, they will do it to you because maybe the father didn't treat her well, so she's giving it to the child. No, no, no. Stop cursing your children. Be blessing them. Amen? Be blessing your children. You curse them and they grow up and you wonder why they are not doing so well. You shape their future with your words. And so speak affirmative words to them. Tell them you love them. I've had many conferences where I asked people, how many of you had, when you were growing up, had your parents say, I love you? And you'll be shocked. Some have never heard their parents say, I love you before. Some have never heard their parents say, I'm proud of you before. And because you didn't hear, that doesn't mean that you should not do that to your parents. Love your parents. And I love your children. Amen? Say it to them. Affirm them. Tell them. Amen? You are the child you have given birth to. And you look at the child and say, it trivial. <laughs> when it be means look at some head to be eh? took that head from you from your family line there's somebody in your family line that had that crooked head you are insulting your child with that head it's some, amen <laughs> so affirm your children amen so children grow better in a stable environment which must be created by loving and responsible parents. So you must be a responsible parent. Now, it's important to remember, like we started saying, that there are seasons in life. And when we talk about seasons, you must remember that parenting cannot be postponed. You can't postpone parenting. Amen? There is a certain season that if you postpone, it's gone. Amen. In 2 Samuel chapter 18, verse 33, this was after Absalom died. After Abs Absalom died. Now, some of you get my sermon that is titled, Is My Child Safe? Is My Child Safe? In there, I talk about David talking about when Absalom caused the rebellion and David ran out of the city and there was a war. And David said, when you go, make sure my son is preserved. And when they brought him back, then you see, ask this, my son safe. But in that same portion of scripture, the verse 33 of 2 Samuel 18, it says, when the king was now told that his son was dead, it says, then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he wept, as he went, he said thus, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom. If only I had died in your place. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. But it was too late. Amen? David could have avoided this. He could have avoided this. 
What do I mean by David could have avoided? You see, there are times we, we take this position that everything has been destined. God is not like that. He doesn't destine everything. That you, you don't have a choice. You have a choice about the things that happen to you. Hello? What did I say? You have a choice about the things that happen to you. Because, you see, Absalom did not only do this all of a sudden. It started at a point. Before your children or your child will become a bad child, there's a starting point. And a lot of the times, that starting point, you as a parent, you see. What happened was, Absalom's sister Tama was raped by his half-brother Ammon. And when that happened, Absalom was waiting for the father to call Ammon and rebuke him before all the children and to say that what you did was wrong. And David did not do anything. And there are fathers who are like that. There are fathers who don't touch anything in the house. They just watch. And so Absalom waited for two years. After two years, when the father was not doing anything, he schemed, got his brother into a place and killed him. And then he ran. And after he ran, Job went and, you know, he invited Joab and, they, uh, and then they maneuvered and brought him back. When he came back, his father, David, still did not call him to rebuke him or to tell him good or bad. He just left him. And the guy came and Absalom, according to the scripture, was so handsome. In fact, the Bible says he used to cut his hair once a year. And, and, and when he cut his hair, he would wait. He had so much hair and he was so handsome. And so Absalom realized that, well, my senior brother, I have killed him. I'm the next in line. So even though his father had not said he was going to be king, as Absalom started standing at the gate, and he started having 50 people ride before him. It was only the king who could have 50 people ride before him. And David had it. And he didn't do anything. And so Absalom will be coming and 50 people will be riding before him as a king. And then when the people came to his far, they, they wanted to see David, he would meet them at the gate. And everybody that was coming to the king must bow. And Absalom will hug them. No, 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 don't bow, don't bow. I mean, the days of bowing, they are over. These are the days we are body buddies. And the Bible says, gradually, he stole the hearts of the people. Hearts can be stolen. Amen? Hearts can be stolen. And that's where women who have house helps. And the house helps are beautiful. And you keep making them serve your husband. Hello? And when they are serving your husband, you don't. I've had a number of ladies stay in my house over the years. But when you're a lady and you stay in my house, you don't enter my bedroom. You don't enter my bedroom. And, and ladies who stay in our house, they don't wash my underwear. <laughs> now, if they start coming to the bedroom when mama is there, when mama is not there, they'll come to the bedroom. And if they come to the bedroom that day, and that day by mistake, I'm not a piece of wood. Why are you looking at me like that? When David was an old man, when David was an old man, the people said, let us go and bring him a beautiful virgin. He was an old man. Oh. And they brought him a beautiful, only that by that time, a starter, the key was missing. Otherwise, even in his old age, what it simply, what that scripture is simply trying to tell us is that for men, even in their old age, the Lord is good and his mercy is endures forever. <laughs> Give the Lord praise. So, why do you put your husband in a difficult situation? You have a house help 
who is 18, 20, 24, 25, and they are in the house, and they are wearing hot pants, and they are passing in front of your husband, and they are serving, and you don't rebuke them. They will steal the heart of your husband. Amen? Amen. Oh, am I teaching some Bible here? The guys, is it true or correct? And ladies, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So, yes, you are growing, so you have house helps and people who cook the food. Serve it. Okay? They cook the food. Serve it. So that you, 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 you lay the table and then you, 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 you garnish it. And when your husband is eating, you sit by him, you are rubbing his back, either you are eating with him. Oh, mommy has ways so. Ah! She will sit by me and oh, and wrap me a meow. Kai! Amen. But he stole the hearts of the people. And David did nothing. That is how it started. So even though in the end David was crying, my son, my son, it was his fault. He didn't do anything. May that be far from you. Amen. He postponed parenting of his children. So regrettably, parenting can neither be delegated nor suspended for a while as we work for fortune and fame. In these days that we all need money, a lot of the times, because we are going for money, we delegate the raising of our children to a house help, uh, somebody, no, don't delegate the raising of your children. Because the growth of children is irreversible. Irreversible. Amen? It's like a young tree. It takes the hands of a good gardener to direct its growth. That is how the life of a child is. Amen? You can't pick it up from where you left off after you reach the top in your career. So there are times you think, when you, I'm doing all this for you. You are doing it for them, but do they see it like that? Because there's a certain time your children need you in their life. So there are many parents who have raised their children, sent them overseas, and in their old age, those parents are here and nobody's taking care of them. Why? Because, and and they, they, they are wondering why, but I took care of him. I sacrificed my everything. I sold everything and took him overseas. I remember one time I sat in a case. And in the case, there was this, chi- this child that was telling me and the parent that when I was little, you took me overseas and you just left me there with your relative. He said, and I couldn't tell you because that relative was your sister. And she maltreated me. And I was wondering whether I was your child. Because if I were your child, you wouldn't have done that to me. He was little. Now she's grown. And she's saying that about the father. And the father said, but I sacrificed everything. I sold everything to take you there. He said, yes, you did. But you didn't show you loved me. Wow. How many understand what I'm talking, what we're talking about? So it's not enough postponing raising your children. It is always easier to mold young children than to rehabilitate them. Amen? And especially if they are boys. It's easier to mold them when they are young than to rehabilitate them when they, are, when they grow old. So if you invest in your child, you don't, if you invest in them, you don't necessarily have to invest for them. If you invest in them, if, 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 if you make the sacrifices today in their lives and you help them, you may not need to give them anything else. What you have invested in them, giving them a solid foundation is enough to take care of them. How many understand what we're talking about? I'm not saying, I'm not saying if you have and you have to leave something for your children, don't do it. 
Because the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Amen. So you must plan for that also. So children require presence and training more than presence. Amen. So presence instead of presence. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. Am I teaching some Bible so far? In, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. It says, when I call to remembrance, Paul is talking to Timothy, when I call to remember, remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, who dwell first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Now, Paul's, uh, uh, Timothy's father was a Greek. And some Bible scholars believe that he was an unbeliever. But his mother was a believer. And his grandmother was a believer and so even though his father was not in Timothy's life the mother and grandmother were in his life amen that is why those of you who are grandparents invest time in the lives of your grandchildren what the ch- what the parents the time the parents cannot make you make it make up for that give the Lord praise give the Lord praise give the Lord praise no amount of gifts and meeting financial needs can replace a parent's personal presence in the life of a growing child. No amount. No amount of gifts. Children want the parent's presence in their lives. The truth of the matter is, even a written will can be torn in a few years after you are dead. Amen? Amen? The only sure inheritance that you can leave behind is the investment you make in your children and not for your children. So you must invest time and attention and your presence in their lives. Let me deal with my last point and then we'll pray some more. In In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 13, God said, For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his sons made themselves vile, and he did not restrain them. So, if you want to stop talk, parents must mold and direct their children in life. They must mold and direct them. They must mold and direct them. So God was saying that you didn't train your children. You, they, they didn't even know where to stop because you didn't train them. So it is the responsibility of every parent to direct and inspire the young ones in a safe and desired way. It is your responsibility. Amen? It is your responsibility. So the youth of a nation represents its powerhouse and energy. Young people have boundless stores of stamina, willpower, capabilities, potential, zeal, and enthusiasm that must be tapped through responsible training and guidance. Their infinite energy has to be properly molded and directed to produce the desired results. So when parents don't harness the vast store of resource in the youth, the future will be bleak. So many children today are into all manner of deviant behavior and some of it their parents don't know. The past few years we've seen some of the children on social media do things and their parents get amazed. Now there is what is called mob, mob reaction. There are times when people are alone, there are things they won't do. But when they have their peers around, suddenly there's a certain kind of something that stirs all of them up. And the things they didn't want to do, they start doing it. Amen? The things they didn't want to do, they start doing it. And a lot of it is because it's parental failure. Because you must know some of the things. You may not know everything, but you must know. A lot of the things your children do because you must have a relationship with them if you have a relationship with them they would tell you amen because look when your children are growing up if they are a boy by the time they are 12 
Now, last week I was reading the story of a 12-year-old boy who has impregnated his sister, his cousin. 12 years. I remember when we were at school, there was this my mate, secondary school. And one day, the father called him and invited him from school when he went. Then this family came. Then they said, uh, he had impregnated. And the guy was just about 15 years old. Then he started crying. He said, Papa, Opa, for me, Connie, and Connie, send me one shoe. How did he know I won't show? <laughs> How did he know? <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, once a child, a boy, is 12 years old, he starts having wet dreams. And then suddenly he starts feeling attracted to the opposite sex. Once a girl, I mean, there's a girl who I, I was reading about. In fact, when we were in primary school, there was one of the girls who was 11. Was it 11 or 12? She got pregnant. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, once they have their menstrual cycle, they can get pregnant. You know, and some of them, even their menstrual cycle doesn't start. <laughs> they, they said the youngest girl who got pregnant was, I think, was it about six or seven, a Colombian girl. You know, so all kinds of things happen. Now, when a girl starts getting to a certain age, she also starts seeing a boy, you know, somebody with a broad chest, and with a, with a, suddenly some things are working in her body. So they should be able to have a conversation with you. Your daughter should be able to tell you, I saw this guy and I had a cash on him. Eh? So you, you have arrived there. Jokingly, you have a conversation with that daughter, but she doesn't tell you I have a crash. Hey. If you don't know and you tell me that stupid thing, you will sleep in this house again. The next time somebody will properly run her, she won't tell you. But you must have that relationship where your daughter can tell you that some boy be is rapping me. But when I heard it, what he said, crowd, there's nothing he was saying that I haven't heard before. Because my daughter, they know I love you. I've said it uh, in the house. Uh, so if you ever say, I love you, it's not a big deal. The only thing I can give them is sex. But, you know, I love you. I hug them. They, they've gotten it. Amen. So your daughter should not go and find solace. They, they should have that relationship where they can talk to you. Your boys should be able to talk to you. Your boys should be able to ask you. So, Papa. I saw this girl. He, something is doing me. So when that happens, what do I do? Then you coach them. You tell them. If something is doing, it means that this girl, eh, if, the, the way something is doing, if you sleep with her, you get her pregnant. Hey, hey, me? Then you have taught them. So there should be a relationship. Give the Lord praise. Give him praise. So parental failure is to blame for the unfortunate developments in our world. And look, being a strict parent doesn't mean you are a tyrant. Doesn't, doesn't mean you should be a tyrant. I'm a very strict parent, but I'm a very jovial parent. Amen? You, and that must be who you are. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. So many parents are doing their utmost to bring up their children, but their best is not good enough. What it means that you must steady, you must give attention, you must find out how to make it better. Many parents lack the necessary parenting skills to make a good job of it. And parenting is a long process and has different and diverse phases. And you must program yourself to be able to take your children through all these different phases. And in the weeks I will be sharing with you, I will be trying to give you some of the keys that I have learned, I have used, and they have worked. Give the Lord praise. Give them praise. Give them praise. And so... I want to conclude my sermon with us praying. And if you are ready to pray, will you please stand? Let's pray. Lift up one hand. Say, Father, give me the wisdom 
to raise my children and my dependents. Open your mouth and talk to God. 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 Give me the wisdom, Lord. Give me the wisdom. Ask for wisdom from Him. Ask for wisdom from Him. Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge. Is the ability to apply knowledge. Ask Him for wisdom. 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 Ask him for wisdom to raise your children and dependents. In Jesus' name. Lift up your hand. Say, God, help my children and my dependents to turn out well. Open your mouth. Talk to God. God should help you. God should help your children. He should help your descendants. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to Him now. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Yes, talk to Him. Yes, God. Help my children. Help my descendants. And my dependents, Lord, to turn out well. Let them impact their generation. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let them impact their generation. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Take your seat and give the Lord a mighty clap of it. Have you been blessed? Was it good? Give the Lord a better clap of it. On Friday, I was a speaker at the maker's house. And I'm going to show you a little testimony of uh, just one of the testimonies. So if my TV people are ready, can we go to the maker's house? Heavenly Father, thank you for your miracle working power. Dear Holy Spirit, you are the healer. Tonight I ask that you stretch forth your healing hands and touch your people. Tonight, I take authority over every spirit of death and dumbness. In the name of Jesus, I ask that the spirit of death and dumbness will be bound, and I ask that deaf ears will open. And I ask that lame legs will walk. I ask that blind eyes will see. You came with a stick. There's a miracle there. There are miracles there. You came with a stick. You came with a There are miracles there. Four years. Four years. And mama now lift it up. Lift up your mama. Yes, let's hold it like this. And let's go here. Let me see. The power of the Lord. The power of the Lord. The power of the Lord. Mama, let's go. The power of the Lord. The power of the Lord. Who came with mama? Mama, who came with you? Where is mama's daughter? Come, come. If you came with these precious women, come down quickly. The, that's your auntie. Your niece. That's my niece. That's your niece. Yeah. So, so you know her. It's not family meeting. No, no. That, that. I was in the family meeting with her on Monday. On Monday, she was. She, you are the daughter. Yes. Why are you crying? You are so happy. You are so. Oh, give the Lord. A, that's another. Are you happy? 
happy. You were praying that God will touch mama. Oh, and God has touched mama. Mama, are you happy? You wrote in your notes. You put in my notes my expectations that one my mother will be healed from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Oh, and God has done it. Give the Lord a mighty clap for her. Mama, put it on your shoulder and go back to your seat, Mama. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Uh, I'll give you other testimonies of that meeting next time. It was awesome. But I your head. If you are here and you are sick in any part of your body, lift up one hand. I want to pray for you. Sick in any part of your body, that same anointing that was on me in the meeting on Friday night is the same anointing on me now. Heavenly Father, I commit your people into your hands. I pray for anybody that is sick right now. I ask that your healing power will flow through their bodies. Satan, break loose your hold over God's property. Lose God's people. Let them go free. And I ask that back problems will be healed. Neck problems will be healed. Heart problems will be healed. Chest problems will be healed. Diabetes will be healed. Cancers will be healed. Every sickness and disease... I command healing for God's people in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that your spine and your neck will be made every way whole. In Jesus' name, I call it done. Amen. Whilst your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, if you are here today and you want your sins forgiven, lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you. If you want your sins forgiven, lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you. If you want to repent of your sins, Lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you. You want your sins forgiven. If you want to be born again, lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you. Yes, if you want to be a new person, yes, lift up one hand. With your hand lifted, please stand. If your hand is lifted, please stand. If your hand is lifted, please stand. Yes. Yes, if your hand is lifted, please stand. If your hand is lifted, please stand. Will you please take your Bible? Your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. You want your son. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. Yes. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. Yes. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. You want your sons forgiven? You want your sons forgiven? You want to be a new person? If it's possible for you, will you please lift up one hand? If it's possible for you, please lift up one hand. And pray this prayer with me. Say, dear God, forgive me all my sins. Lord Jesus, you died for me. You rose for me. Come into my life. Make my life a testimony to those who know me. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name. Put your hand on your chest. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for your people. I ask that they will know you. And know you better. I pray that you shake them off any bad habit and anything that holds them in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, will you please stand? And church, if today is your first day worshiping with us, take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. Today is your first day worshiping with us. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse, walk to me in front here. If today is your first day worshiping with us, Today is your first day worshiping with us. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse. Yes, put your hands together for them. Amen. You see this dear lady on your left? Look at the lady on your left. Okay. Open your eyes. 
and open your eyes and look at me. Follow the lady on your left. Follow this lady on your left. Put your hands together for them. Church, you can do it better than that. Awesome, awesome. Put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. Oh, awesome, 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 awesome. Will you take your seats? Take your seats. Hallelujah. Give uh, Pastor Coleman a microphone. Oh, church, let's clap our hands. That was such an insightful teaching from the Lord. But this morning, if you are here, we want to give our offering. The Bible says in the book of 2 Samuel 24, 25, say the other day, David disobeyed God. And the Lord's anger was kindled against him. And he did all that he could do. It was not stopping until he decided to sacrifice. And Bible says when he sacrificed, the Lord entreated for the land. Maybe this morning you are here listening to Papa. It looks like the time is over. But I can assure you, as you give your seed, God is well able to rewrite the stories together. If you believe that, somebody clap your hands. And give praise to God. And if you want to give on our short code, it's star 800, star 1000 hash on all networks. You won't be charging any e-levy charges. Star 800, star 1000 hash. And then our MTN mobile number is 0243-500-624. 0243-500-624. And our Vodafone cash 0203162084. 0203162084. If you are watching us from abroad, we want to give through Send Wave or Word Remit or Tap Tap. And the name is Paris Dome, Paris Chapel International. And the number is plus 233 Plus 233 or plus 233 Three five zero zero six two four. If you want to give through PayPal, the, num- the address, the email address is perisdome at perischapel.org. Perisdome at perischapel.org. Or you can give through the email at perisdome. Church, please rise to your feet as we share a word of prayer. Those who can give 200 cities and above, 200 cities and above. Father, we lift our offerings unto you. We ask that, Father, every seed we are going to give, let your blessings come upon it and multiply it for us in Jesus' name. Those who can give 200 cities and above, please come and put at the altar. Whilst you are coming, pray over your offering and place it at the altar. 200 cities and above. 200 cities and above. 200 cities and above. Place it at the altar. 200 cities and above. If you are coming, don't throw the money. Put it at the altar. Honor God with your seat. 200 cities and above. 200 cities and above. You want to honor God with your seat this morning. 200 cities and above. For those of us who can also give 100 cities. 100 cities. Please come. 100 cities. 100 cities. Place it at the altar. 100 cities and above, 100 cities and above, as you are coming, place it at the altar. When you are honoring God with your seed, don't throw it at the altar. Put it on the altar whilst you pray over the seed. 100 cities and above. You can't outgive God. 100 cities and above, 100 cities and above. There are some of us who can also give 50 cities and above. Rise to your feet as you come. Put it on the altar. Honor the altar of God. Don't throw the envelope. Put it on the altar whilst you pray. Come in. 50 cities and above. 50 cities and above. 50 cities and above. As you are coming, you are praying, you are asking God as you give your seed according to his word. 
50 cities and above, 50 cities and above, 50 cities and above. Fifty cities and above. Fifty cities and above. Fifty cities and above. You are here. You can give twenty, thirty, forty. Rise to your feet and come. Twenty, thirty, forty cities. Thirty-five, twenty-five. That is your seed in your heart, and you want to honor God with that seed. And like I said, when you come, don't throw the offering place it at the altar honor god with your substance 20 30 40 25 35 place it at the altar there are some of us also who have say we have 15 i have 10 i have two bring it before the altar place it at the altar honor god with the substance don't throw the envelope place it at the altar whilst you pray yes Honor God with your substance. Place it at the altar. It's possible you can touch the altar. But faith will bring you what you desire. But faith will bring you what you demand. I have 15, I have 10, I have 5. I have two CD. Thank you so much. Shall we please invite a resident pastor to take over? Let's clap our hands even as the resident pastor can. Can we receive the electronic announcement? If you are watching us, please stay tuned. We have some announcements for you. Please stay tuned. Good morning, everyone, and certainly you've been blessed by the message. As part of the Perez Dome family, we seek to glorify God and share his love with the world, with the compassion of Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Elomas Menin is my name, and this is the announcement. Precious one, Tuesday is our communion service. Don't forget when they had the Passover in the book of Exodus. They went by the strength. There was not one feeble person amongst them for 40 years. This coming Tuesday is a special day. I want to specially invite you to be in attendance. And the power of God will be activated in your life like never before. Invite you and your family coming Tuesday from 6 p.m. And your life will never be the same. God meets you at the point of your need. See you there. Precious one, I want to specially invite you to our service this and every Sunday at the Perez Dome, Jowlu Junction. The Bible says God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from the actions. I have a special word from God for you that will bring you healing, deliverance, and your life around completely. If you are sick, troubled, struggling in your finances, your job, or your family, the power of God's word will set you free. So join me at the Perez Dome. This and every Sunday, you are light at the Jolu Junction. Just ask for the Perez Dome or look out for this big church. We have pastors and trained people who will help you. Our first service is at 6:30 a.m. Second service is at 9 a.m. Get ready for your freedom. I'll be seeing you this Sunday. God bless you. There'll be free buses available to shift from Jolu to Seiko, Jolu to La Paz, and to Malam Junction. Jolu to Achimota and to Mile 7. Jolu to 37 to Medina. That is all we have for you today. And make sure to connect us on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram by searching our handle at the Perez Dome. And don't forget to like, follow, and engage our content. Join us on Tuesday for our breakthrough service at a.m. followed by Rima Time. Hello, Martin is my name. Do have a wonderful day. God bless you. Precious one, I hope you've been in the service. But if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, and you want to repent and be born again, 
pray this prayer with me. Dear God, forgive me all my sins. Lord Jesus, you died for me. You rose for me. Come into my make my life a testimony to those that know me. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can put a hand on your chest. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I call this dear viewer into your hands. I pray that there will be a star you and know you like never before in Jesus' name. And beloved, if you are any part of your body, I want to pray with you. Heavenly Father, stretch for miracle working hand and touch this dear viewer. Satan, break loose your God's property. And I command you to lose God's people, let them go free. Because you know me and you would obey me because I don't come in my name. I come in the powerful name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of eye problem, every spirit of ear problem, every spirit of back problem, every spirit of skin disease, every spirit of every spirit of cancers and pain. Ask that from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you be made every in Jesus' name, I call it done. Amen. Beloved, what could you do before? Begin to do it. And you see that God's miracle working power worked in your life. Let me know what the Lord has done for you. You will never be the same. If you are believing God for any breakthrough whatsoever, lay your hand on your forehead. Let us pray. Father, I ask that, Lord, you touch your people. I ask that you would do for your people only you can do. I ask that your grace will be manifested in some of your people. I pray for favor, for open doors, for an open heaven. Pray that you will intervene in the affairs of your people. In Jesus' name, I call it done. Amen. Beloved, join us next week, God willing, and your life will never be the same.